And then here for our ANOVA table, this gives us a test, a p-value, for the test of the R-squared. So model 1 R-squared 0.38, that's just the SAT score, and that is significant with a p-value less than 0 0.05. And then model 2 R-squared 0.491, which includes both SAT score and social support, that's also significant with a p-value less than 0.05. Now we could summarize these values as follows. So the results, model 1 SAT, as I said earlier, R squared 0.38, and then the ANOVA results, I could have F1, 28 equals 17.18, P is less than 0 0.001. So that's where you see this here for model 1. And our conclusion would be that SAT is a significant predictor of college GPA. And then model 2, we see that SAT and social support, the R squared once again was 0.491. And the ANOVA results, F227 equals 13.04, so you see that right here, with a P of less than 0 0.001. And then our conclusion here is, when taken together as a group, SAT and social support significantly predict college GPA. But recall also that we had that third question in hierarchical regression, which really was the most interesting one. And that was, does social support account for a significant amount of variance above and beyond SAT scores? Now there's a way we can get at that in our tables here, and let's think about this for a minute. If model 2, which includes both SAT score and social support, had an R squared of 0.491, and model 1, which includes just SAT score, had an R squared of 0.38, then how much R squared is accounted for by social support? Well, if we looked at these two values and subtracted one from the other, so 0.491 minus 0 0.380, that would give us 0 0.111. That is the R squared that is attributable to social support. So that's the additional variance that is accounted for by social support. Now the question is, is that significant? Now these tables don't get at that 0.111 directly, whether that is significant or not. But there's something we can do in SPSS to help us assess that. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to rerun our regression analysis. So go to Analyze, once again, and then regression, linear. And then here, let's go to statistics. And I want to select R squared change. Okay, that's the change in R squared from model one to model two. So go ahead and click on that and then click continue. This table here, you're going to see it. It's going to expand and it's going to have the information that I want. So click OK. And then here's that table, model summary. Notice change statistics. These five columns here are all new. So what I want to do is look in this column, R squared change. Recall that we just did this a minute ago. We took 0.491, subtracted 0.38 from it, and got 0.111. Well, this value here, this p-value, is a test of whether or not adding social support, whether that social support, when it was added, did it account for a significant amount of additional variance in college GPA. And because this p-value is less than 0.05, it's 0 0.022, that tells us that social support did in fact account for a significant amount of additional variance when it was added in the model, in the regression analysis. And we could report the F here, 127 equals 5.90, and then p is equal to 0 0.022. So let's summarize that to make sure it's clear. So the change in R squared equal 0.111, we see that there, from the model summary change statistics, model 2. So here's the change statistics. We want to look under R squared change for model 2. That's 0.111. And then we see here, as I said a minute ago, F1 and 27. So 127 equals 5.90. So that's where this is coming from. And P equals 0 0.022.
So we can conclude, yes, social support accounts for a significant amount of variance above and beyond SAT scores. Okay, and in case you're curious, you might wonder, why is there an R-squared change for Model 1? Well, notice this, 0.38 change, and the R-squared was 0.38. So what did this change from? Well, it changed from 0, where there's no predictors in the model. So this is really just a test of, does SAT score account for a significant amount of variance in college GPA? So this is a change from 0, when there was no predictors in the model, and then Model 2 is a change from Model 1. So since Model 1 was SAT and Model 2 was SAT and Social Support, so then Model 2 change is testing whether Social Support accounts for a significant amount of additional unique variance in GPA. Now one other thing here. Because we had only one predictor added, Notice the p-value of 0 0.022 here. You can also find that right here under social support for Model 2, 0 0.022. And the reason for that is, is because we only added one predictor. This assesses the amount of unique additional variance social support accounts for in GPA. But we talked about the coefficients table before in multiple regression, how the test of each of these predictors is a test of whether they counted for a unique amount of variance in the dependent variable. So because there was only one predictor added in this step, this test here of this one predictor is the exact same as this test here of this one predictor. But by asking for the output here for the change, we do also get the degrees of freedom and the F value, which we don't get elsewhere for that change and we get the R-squared change calculated. But where this row and p-value would depart from this is if in Model 2 we had two or more predictors added, then this p-value would assess whether the two predictors taken together account for a significant amount of additional unique variance. Whereas that p-value in this case of the two predictors would not be shown down here because these p-values are for individual predictors. So the coefficients table always has the p-value for each individual predictor. The change statistics has a p-value for one or more predictors. It just really depends on the analysis that we conducted. And recall in hierarchical regression, we can add as many predictors as we want in a second step. So I could have social support, I could have well-being, or what have you, as multiple predictors in this step two if I want, or in this model two. And once again, we can also have a third step or a third model if we want. I could have social support here, and then I could have SAT, social support, well-being here, and so on. And I could continue if I wanted in a fourth model or a fourth step and so on. So really, there's no restrictions in terms of how many predictions we want to add in a second step and so forth. It's just typically driven by theoretical concerns or research questions. What is it that we're trying to look at? What is it that we're trying to accomplish? In summary, this change statistics table can be very helpful to assess the specific unique effect of adding one or more predictors in a second step or model or a third model, or fourth, and so on. This concludes the video on hierarchical regression in SPSS. Thanks for watching.